I grew up loving reading fantasy. I loved looking at images of places that I'd never been to. I loved trying to manufacture places I'd never been to. It seems like what I am doing now is very much the same mindset that I had growing up in terms of wanting to create an alternate reality or a, a, a some other place. I began my career with the camera and film as my tool. Uh, probably the, my most valuable tool right now is a computer mouse uh, or a stylus and a pad. Um, I still work with traditional materials. I'm uh, very much a fan of the traditional printing press and use that a lot in my work, but I also use Epson printers, uh, very large lacquer-based canvas printers, uh, digital technology, but I always try to have the look that these works were not digitally created. If I were to do this in traditional painting media, if I had a brush, if I had a canvas, everything I was doing, nobody would question. However, I come from it from the aesthetic and the history of photography. Over the past 25 years, the trajectory of my work has involved questioning the veracity of a photographic image. And even though people know that what I'm doing is not real, the fact that I'm telling them it's a photograph, they're bringing all sorts of questions to it because I'm saying it's a photograph. It's like making a movie. Uh, you're trying to get the semblance of a reality that never existed, and you're trying to get your viewer to believe in that reality. I'm going to try to work and create something that's totally fake, and by introducing the element of the photograph in it, have the viewer sit there and question everything that they're seeing. I love a work of art that has enough mystery that you can't pin it down. So I started taking images of clouds and I digitally began dissecting those images. And then everything that I dissected out of that one photograph that I took, I stitched back together in a different order. Nothing was added, nothing was taken away, but it was reordered. And what I was ending up with were these clouds that looked fantastically fake, yet every single element of them was something that actually existed. I went from clouds to seascapes because seascapes, very much like clouds, are never the same. I approached that from the exact opposite end of the clouds. And so conceptually, I was wondering, could I make a fake photograph look totally real? The original moons, it, it was a challenge to me. Could I create a moon that uh, an astronomer who is, is familiar with the surface of the moon would believe was real? And I was staring at the concrete floor of my studio and I was noticing how much the pits and stains looked like craters and, and the surface of the moon, and I thought, could I sit there with a map of the moon and all these photographs that i would taken of the pits and stains of the concrete floor of my studio, could I create a plausible moon? And then I started stitching those together digitally and spherizing them, and what I ended up with is something that looked almost identical to the real moon. The, the amazing thing of the, the, that was fun about the trees were the trees were assembled from about 200 different photographs that I'd made over the course of about a year of bare trees. And I took bits and branches of each one of those and literally cobbled together a tree that, tried to, that I tried to make look as real as possible. I think the thing that ties my work together is the, the idea behind it always stays the same. But what changes, sometimes radically, is the aesthetics of doing that. I try to give the viewer just enough. Just enough to fill in the gaps on their own.